Hello and welcome to my video on the Twisted Slip Stitch Selvage. This is a completely optional and additional technique you can learn if you'd like to make your edges extra smooth and neat. I'm going to be demonstrating using garter stitch because garter stitch has a bumpy selvage and so you'll be able to see the contrast between the usual garter stitch and garter stitch with a twisted slip stitch edge. The selvages, by the way, are the top and bottom edges of your knitted work. I have already started my demo by knitting several rows of garter stitch. These rows I have just knit back and forth, which is what garter stitch is, just row after row of knit stitch, and you can see at the edges that they are bumpy. So the selvages are bumpy on regular garter stitch. Whereas the handful of rows above it, I have done the twisted slip stitch edging. And you can see the edge goes in a little bit, but is much smoother and eliminates all of the bumps. So here are the bumps on the edge of the garter stitch Whereas with a slip stitch edge, what you get is a selvage that is much smoother, thinner, and looks like a chain, which I think is a lot more attractive than the usual finish. Okay, so let's get on with the demonstration. Now the first thing you need to do is cast on your stitches. Just ignore all the knitting that I've done previously. Just cast on your stitches and follow along with me from this point onwards. The very first stitch is where you're going to slip the stitch knitwise with the yarn in the back. When I say yarn in the back, I just mean that the yarn is behind the needles and away from you. To slip a stitch knitwise, you go into the stitch as if you're going to knit it, but instead of completing the knit stitch, you simply just slip the stitch off the end of the needle. And it's as simple as that. And then you just carry on with your normal pattern. In this case, because I'm doing garter stitch, it's just knit stitch after knit stitch, all the way along the row. And then I'm going to do one different stitch at the end of the row. So I'm just going to do knit stitches all the way along until I get to the very last stitch. It's not only garter stitch where you can add this kind of edge. You can add it to stockinette stitch, seed stitch and many other different patterns. And when we get to the last stitch, it's going to be a purl stitch. And remember to purl, you need to bring the yarn to the front between the needles. You then just purl the stitch as you normally would purl a stitch. And that is the end of the row. So all this method entails is slipping the first stitch knitwise, then doing your regular pattern in between until you get to the last stitch. In this case, the regular pattern was garter stitch. And then for the last stitch, you purl it. So every first stitch you slip knitwise and every last stitch you purl and you do that on every row. I'm now going to repeat the row so you can watch if you'd like one more demo. As before you need to slip the first stitch knitwise. So you take your right hand needle and go into the stitch as if you're going to do a knit stitch. But instead of completing the stitch you just simply slip the stitch off the end of the needle. Then you go on to do your regular pattern, which could be pretty much anything, but in this case it's garter stitch. So I'm going to do knit stitch all the way until the last stitch, when I'm going to purl to complete the row. So 
Because this technique involves adding a different stitch at the start and end of every single row, what you should do is add two extra stitches onto whatever pattern you are following. So for instance, if you're making a garter stitch scarf and it says to cast on 40 stitches and you want to do this kind of edging, then just cast on 42 stitches instead. This way you don't interfere with the original pattern. I hope you'll give this technique a go because it's actually quite simple but gives a really nice finish and just adds that extra quality to your work. Thanks very much for watching.